Thank you. Thank God for the opportunity to be back in the house of the Lord one more time. God is a good God and he's worthy to be praised. I thank God for his faithfulness. And I, I, I'm a believer in the word of God. If you're faithful unto God, he will be faithful unto you. Even though you don't make all of the right decisions all of the time, your faithfulness, if you're faithful unto God, he will be faithful unto you. And so I'm so grateful for his faithfulness and his mighty works um, that he has done in this place. Um, I am I'm a bachelor today. I'm all by myself. Nobody's home. Whatever will I do in that big old house by myself? <laughs> But we thank God. I thank God for just how he's faithful to me and how he's faithful to my, my family. I, 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 years ago when my kids were just babies, I prayed over them and I, I prayed for certain things in their life. And all of those things are coming to fruition because I believe in if you, if you are faithful unto God and you do what God says do and you trust him and you trust his word. His word does not lie. I'm a firm believer in that. If you take him at his word not necessarily challenge him at his word not necessarily cha challenge him at the word but if you take him at the word then um, he will do what his word says and if you read the word you study the word you learn the word the word will work for you how many believe that I believe God's word works I believe it works and and, and so the older I get the more I fall in love with the word um, and, 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 and knowing that it has power uh, why is the, does the word work so much? The word works so much is because it is God. How was the word God? In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So if you've got this, you've got God right there with you. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So we thank God that if you've got the word of God, then you've got God, you've got Jesus, you've got the Father, you've got the Son, you've got the Holy Ghost, you've got all uh, the triune spirits of God in one right here with you. And there's nothing that the word cannot fix. There's nothing that the word cannot work out. There's nothing that the word cannot do as long as you have enough faith to trust God and to take him at his word and that's what we're going to talk about today is taking God at his word and believing on him um, when we uh, don't know the word and we don't know the uh, validity of the word uh, oftentimes we worry about things we have no business worrying about and so I'm grateful and, 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 and as I prepared this message last night uh, the devil in the middle of my sleep got me to thinking about my family who's all on the road and had me worrying and he said you see you're up there worrying and you're going to preach about worrying but I got on my knees and I started praying God you I, I'm not going to preach this thing now if you if I'm, I'm here worrying and he said don't worry that's the devil trying to tell you trying to stop you uh, from hearing what I am saying to you so that the people of God will get something from this word so I'm grateful today because I take him at his word I'm grateful that that my son Javon is, is out doing his thing I laid hands on them as I said and I prayed that God would uh, do something great in their lives. I don't have money to pay for college. I just don't have it. Uh, and so I said, I want them to go to college um, and I want them to get the education they need because you cannot get a job nowadays, a nice job. Uh, you can, but it's very hard unless you have a degree. And so I know people who have degrees and can't get jobs. So I said, God, you need to make a way. Well, we all know that Brandon got a scholarship to play basketball. And Javon, who's not even started his junior year, has already got his first offer to go play basketball. So we already got a school that said, we'll pay everything. And I know more are going to come. So I'm grateful for that. Why did that happen? Because I took him at his word and I trusted him at his word and I said God whatever I'm going whatever I need to do I'm going to do it as you said now I drove to uh, Kentucky on Friday I went to work drove straight over there got on the road after uh, after um, his last game Tara and her, Tara had to work in the morning Saturday so she and her mom came over and after his last game I packed my bags I got on the road and I came back and people may question why would you come all the way back to Chillicothe when your son's playing because I made God a promise if you do something for me I'm gonna continue to do something for you and just because you've done it I'm not gonna stop doing what you told me to do because I believe he rewards your faithfulness 
And if he rewards your faithfulness, who am I to stop doing what God does for me because uh, I think I'm better than that? No, I need to go and do what thus, thus saith the Lord. I'm not looking for accolades. I'm not looking for money. I'm not looking for anything but for God to keep doing what he said he would do. And he said, if you do what you say you're going to do, you take me at my word and my word will come true in your life. How many believe that this morning? I believe God's word is true. I believe it is true. And so our text today deals with, um, in, in um, Luke, the ninth chapter, Luke chapter nine. And the apostles, when they returned, told him all that they had done. And he took them and went aside privately into a desert place belonging to the city called Bethsaida. Not to be mistaken with what we preached a couple weeks ago, Bethesda. This is Bethsaida. This means the house of fish, the house of supply or the house of fish. Remember what I told you that Bethesda meant the word Beth means what? The house of turmoil, the house of, um, um, I'm sorry, the house of, of God, the house of supply, the house of, 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 of everything. That's what Beth means. And it has to mean the house of turmoil. And remember I said, how did you get, how does uh, you get those two names put together when you put Beth and Hesda? Uh, you put them together when Jesus came into your life all of the turmoil then took place and then your turmoil became supply to you you remember I taught you that this is Beth Bethsaida which means the house of fish go to verse number 11 and the people when they knew verse number 11 go back up verse number 11 you are at 12 verse number 11 there we go. And the people, when they knew it, followed him, and he received them, and spake unto them, and the kingdom of God, and healed them that had need of healing. Verse number 12. And when the day began to wear away, then came the twelve, and said unto him, and this is what I want you to see, said unto him, send the multitude away that they may go into the towns and country round about and lodge and get victuals. Is that right? Yes, victuals, for we are here in a desert place. Let's move on to verse number 13. But he said unto them, give them to eat. And they said, we have no more but five loaves and two fish except we should go and buy meat for all this people. Verse number 14. And this is what I want you to see. For they were about 5,000 men, and he said unto the disciples, make them sit down. Make them sit down. Someone say sit down. Make them sit down by 50s in a company. So we understand that this text uh, or we're familiar with I believe most of us heard of the story with the boy with the two fish and the five loaves of bread when uh, Jesus took the two fish and the five loaves of bread and fed 5,000 men not including the women and children so we understand that this is the text that he's dealing with when he took the fish and the loaves of bread and he uh, fed the people but what I want you to use for uh, what I want to use for our subject this morning is sit down sit down do this with me look at your neighbor find somebody and say neighbor I know you're worried I know you're struggling I know you it's difficult I know there's pain I know there's problems I know there's circumstances but I've got two words for you and those words are sit down sit down simply put Two words is all we got to say is sit down. This is a time when the disciples uh, and Jesus was going about doing the work of Christ. And uh, they came to a place where they had uh, people who were following them. Now, as well as you know, when people are gathered together, especially church folk, when they're gathered together, one thing they like to do is to eat. That's, that's one thing that we like to do we like to eat we we have we have we break bread together we have cookouts uh, when we have family reunions we like to what eat 
that's just what we like to do. We like to put the burgers on the grill, the hamburgers on the grill, and we like to sit down at the picnic table or grab the lawn chairs, and then we like to eat because that's just what we do. So Jesus had a, a great following, not including his disciples. You see, his disciples were the 12 chosen ones that were following him, that, that were in his ministry, that provided for him, that prayed with him, that helped him uh, do his ministry. Because in the latter part of this text, we even see where Jesus had anointed them to heal the sick and to cast out demons. So he had given his disciples a special anointing. That's what we as disciples of Christ have. We have a special anointing. The Bible says this, after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall receive power understand when you become a disciple of god of christ and you become a follower of him and you receive the holy ghost you have power now the power you have should keep you to the place and make it make it to the place where where you do not worry about some things you you do not worry you see the devil the devil tries to get us to worry because he understands that if he can get our minds preoccupied with thinking uh, 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 and worrying about things we can't fix, then we can't have our mind on Christ. That's why the Bible said, let this mind be in Christ that is in Christ be also in you. The devil understands that he can get some of us with some things, some of us with other things. And in other words, what, what it gets to get Evangelist Moody, it may not get me. What, what he uses to get me, it may not get Evangelist Moody. But one thing that he uses to get everybody, every believer, is he has them worry. Someone say worry. Because he understands if you worry, you can't keep your mind on Christ. If you worry, you can't keep your mind on the things of God. If you worry, if you worry about your bills being paid, you won't pay your tithes. If you worry about uh, being, this happening and that happening, you, you won't come to church. If you're worried about somebody breaking in your house, you're going to stay home and not come to church. If you're worried about somebody robbing you on your way to church, you won't come to church. You see, the devil will cause you to worry about things you have no control over anyways you cannot control what other people do to you you can only control how you react to what they do to you and so if you worry about what you can't control then the devil has you when Brandon was going through his process of recruiting I began to worry I said God I prayed the offers weren't coming in this was happening that was happening coaches were talking to us one nobody offering and he spoke to me and said did not I say I would take care of it if you did what I told you to do then why are you worried about what you cannot control you cannot control what happens to you. That, that's why we have to understand. We have to change our attitude and change our mindset. Lord, things don't happen to me. They happen for me. Even difficult situations that I go through, don't say it happened to me. It happened for me. These things work out for the good of them that are called according to the purpose and the will of God. So I understand that things don't happen to me, but they happen for me. So the devil wants us to be worried. Someone say worry. The disciples here were at a place where they were following Christ. And the people were getting hungry. And they wanted to eat. So the disciples said to Jesus, send them away. Watch this. Send them away so that they can go get food from other places because the place we're in right now is the desert place. Uh -huh. Don't you know the devil wants you to go away from the house of God when things get wrong? Well, he done made me mad, so I'm not going back. That's just what the devil wants you to do. They offended me, so I'm not going back. That's just what the devil wants you to do. He wants you to go away from the house of God because you've been offended by something. You're worried about something. And that's just what the disciples were doing here. They didn't know what they were doing. They said, Lord, send them away. Why would I go away from the one who supplies my need according to the, his riches and glory? 
Why would I leave his side when the time that I need him most, why would I go away? Because the devil wants to distract you, say distractions. The devil wants to distract you. So he, they said, the disciples said this, they said, go away, let them go away and let them go find food. And what did Jesus say? He said, no, you feed them. Look at your neighbor and say, you feed them. You, you Diane. Who, who's going to feed your family? Who, who's going to feed your son that you once saved? Are you going to wait for the bishop to pray for him? Or are you going to feed him and pray for him yourself? You feed them. No, God. No, Jesus. You let them go away. No, I don't want them going away. Because if they go away, they're out of my presence. My God from Zion. And if they're out of my presence, then they're lost. But you don't understand we're in a desert place and, 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 and we're worried and we, we can't think and we can't, we can't think, we can't see them being healed. We can't see them being delivered. We can't see them being set free. So we get, low, we get slowful, we walk away and God said, don't worry. Don't worry. Be happy. <laughs> Y'all remember that song? So he wants them to go away. And, 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 and Jesus said, no, I don't want them going away. You feed them. Why did he want them to go away? Because they were hungry and they were worried if the people would eat. And if they're worried if the people would eat, then they want to send them away. But Jesus said, no, you feed them. I believe it was Jesse Jackson who said one time, if not me, then who? And if not now, then when? If we have that attitude in the body of Christ, if not me, then who? If not now, then when? Things will get done. But they were in a desert place, Pam, and they were afraid because they were worried about if they had enough food to feed everybody. And they said, Jesus said, no, you feed them. And when they got the word from Jesus saying, you feed them, what, um, what did uh, happen here was they said to him, the only thing we have is two little fish, thank you, and five loaves of bread. All we have is the leftovers from a boy's lunch. All we have are some scraps. That's all we have. Shalon, you, you heard it at your daughter's wedding. If you give a good wife some scraps, she'll make a meal. All we have are some scraps. But how many know that Jesus uses scraps? Because he used me. I was not whole. I was not everything I should be. I was not everything I could be. I was broken. I was torn. I was messed up. I was confused. I had it all wrong in my life. But God still saw fit to use me in the situation and the condition. Now, is there anybody in here that knows that God can still use you no matter how far you've gone, no matter what you've been through? Why? Because God knows how to use leftovers. Lady Mothman knows, but dad knows at Thanksgiving he's eating turkey for six days. Because my mother knows how to use leftovers. That generation knows how to use leftovers. They know how to take a turkey and cook it and then you eat it. And then the next day you have cream turkey over mashed potatoes. Then the next day you have turkey soup and, and then the next day, Brady, you take to work a turkey sandwich. So that turkey knows how to be used. See, you see, you see, you have the ability to use scraps and make it a meal. And that's just what God did to us. He had the ability to take our brokenness and use it. Take our pain and use it. Take our life and use it. That's good. And so... He said, they said, all we have are little scraps of this boy's lunch. He said, have them sit down. You see, they were worried. Someone say worried. worried. 
Philippians, if you can get that up, fellas. Philippians 4, 6 through 8. If you don't have it, turn, turn in your Bibles. Philippians 4. Okay, let's stay there. Be careful for nothing. The word careful in its original sense means to worry. Okay, do you see that? So it would say, don't worry about what? About nothing, about anything. God, how am I not to worry about something? Well, he goes on to tell us how we can't worry. It says, be careful for nothing, but in everything by what? Prayer and supplication. When's the last time you prayed? Not needing something. We said this before. When's the last time you prayed? Just to pray and get in the face of God. Don't worry about anything. But in everything by prayer and supplication. Then it says this. With what? Thanksgiving. Let your request be made. With what? Thanks, Thanksgiving. Someone say Thanksgiving. So why is it when we testify, we don't give thanksgiving for what God has done, what God is doing, or what his word said he's about to do? That's a testimony. I thank you for what you've done. I thank you for what you're doing. And I thank you for what your word said you have to do. So if your word said you had to do it, I give thanks to you. I sing praises to your name. Oh Lord, praises to your name. I sing that because I understand your word is true. And that's why I praise him like I do. Because I understand that the Bible says said in with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto who? God. Not unto your homeboy. Not unto your homegirl. You see, you can't tell everybody everything. Some people just want to know your business. They don't want to help you. They don't want to pray for you. They don't want to support you. They just want to know your business. If you know me, you come to me. And a lot of times I say, okay, and that's my attitude. I don't want to know. Why? All I got to do is pray for you. So it said, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto who? Let's go to verse number seven. Verse number seven. And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds. What did I say the devil's trying to do with distracting us and make us worry? He's trying to keep our minds on that instead of him. But when you don't worry about anything, by prayer and supplication, you allow your mind to think on the things of God. He said, keep your mind stayed on me and I will keep you in perfect peace. He said, and the peace of God that passes all understanding. What does it mean to pass all understanding? That people just don't understand how you could be going through what you're going through and you can still praise God and love God the way you love God. Sometimes it blows my mind how I can keep my peace in difficult situations, but it's because it, it said it in his word. He said, if you keep your mind stayed on me, I'll keep you in perfect peace. And if you pray and ask God, he said, the peace of God will pass your understanding, shall keep your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. Now, he, he told us now not to worry. And he told us what to do to pray. Then go to verse number seven, or verse number eight. Verse number eight. Finally, he gives this decree. Brethren, whatsoever things are true. I want you to see something. Whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise to think on these things. 
when you think on pure thoughts, when you think on good reports, when you think on honest reports, quit letting your mind wander to what's going on, quit letting your mind wander to what's wrong, and just think that God is good. If he's not good, he's a liar, and he's not a liar, he's good all the time. So, when I allow my mind to think on those things, when, when they think on them things, it's not worried, Tina, about what I'm going through. It's only thinking. You may think I'm crazy, but the imagination is very powerful. Very powerful. The imagination, someone's imagination created this church. Someone's seen it in their imagination. They had a vision in their mind. They thought of it. This is how we want it to look. And the image that they had in their mind then was put on paper. That's why the Bible says, write the vision and make it plain that they may run and not paint. So they had an image in their mind that this is going to be made. They could have made this look like anything they wanted to. But because of their imagination, their mind. Remember what I told you about Genesis? chapter 1 in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth and then he said let us make man in our likeness and in our image and I ask you what is the image of God look like because God is a what spirit so God didn't have two hands he didn't have two legs he didn't have two eyes he didn't have a nose and he didn't have a mouth right because he's a spirit so in his imagination he said, let us make man in our likeness and in our image, our imagination. This is what I want man to look like. And he made Adam. You see it? I want Adam to have two legs. I want Adam to have two feet. I want him to have two, 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 two mouths. I want him to have this. He's God. I imagine Brycey's going to look like this. And that's how he made Brycey look. You see what I'm saying? So the imagination is very powerful. And if we allow our imagination to roam and we worry with our mind, we will never get what God wants us to get. So I'm going to close because I'm losing some of Some of us are falling asleep. I'm getting hungry. Amen. So the disciples were with Jesus and they said, let them go away. D, can you grab me a chair? That chair. Let them go away so that they can get food to eat because they're in a desert place. Uh -huh. And Jesus said, No, you feed them. Watch this. Let's use this illustration. So if you're in a desert place and you're walking around, Brother Lloyd, would you come here? And there's a distraction that is following me. As a matter of fact, the distraction holds on to my shirt. And everywhere I move, that distraction moves. Someone from the outside looking in doesn't know what the distraction is. They just see two forms up here. Because everything I do, distraction does. Right? So, my thoughts of my past life, the things that I've done, distraction. So it's following. Come here, movie. My body is in pain and sickness, and so I'm worried about if I'm going to get cancer, and it attaches itself to me. And every time I move, those two distractions move with me. Are you coming, Shalom? Are you falling? And, and those past relationships that I've been in that weren't conducive to me and conducive to God, thoughts, it attaches itself to me. And everywhere I move, that distraction moves. Now, Brady, if I were to run away to get deliverance, my distractions are going to go with me. And there's no distinct difference between my distractions. Why? Other than I'm six foot, almost three. They're not as tall. Brother Lloyd is a white man, and I'm a black man. 
Shalana's a white, I mean, Shalana's a light skin. <laughs> There's no difference. Why, Michaela? Because everything I do, the distractions do. If I go this way, the distractions go with me. Distractions are always keeping your mind focused on things that are not good. Negativity, pain, distress, harmfulness, sickness. Are my kids going to be saved? Are my kids going to get this? Am I going to be delivered? Am I going to be set free? Am I going to get through this? Everywhere you go, distraction does everything you do. But distraction can't do this one thing because distraction is always working. So in order to show the difference between you and your distraction, Jesus said, sit down. Not you, distraction can't sit down. See, distraction can't sit down. And even though now my distractions are attached to me, they can't sit down. Because they're constantly working, trying to make my mind think about things that I'm going through. And when Jesus sees you sitting down in the middle of your distractions, even though the distractions are still there, my mind is sitting down. And that's what Jesus said do. He said, have them sit down. Why did he have them sit down? Because I want them to rest. I want them to know that even though their distractions are there and they're attached to them, I'm slowly removing the distractions out of their life if you just let your mind rest on his peace and understand if you sit down in the desert place where you are, he'll start pushing those distractions away. Back to the seat distraction. I don't know how the distraction, Michelle, got away. I don't know when it got away. All I know is now everybody, including Christ himself, can see the difference in me and my distraction. This, this is not who I am. The crying all the time is not who I am. The worrying all the time is not who I am. The being having pity parties all day is not who I am. That's nothing but a distraction. And if you sit down... If you sit down in the middle of your distraction, God will find you where you are because I'm thinking about those things that are true, that are honest, that are, they said I'll never be nothing, that's just a distraction. They said I'll never amount to nothing, that's just a distraction. They said I wouldn't be no good, that's just a distraction. My father was a drunk, you're going to be a drunk. That's just a distraction. My father wasn't in my life, you're not going to be in your kid's life. That is just a distraction. But when you sit down, God causes distraction to go back. When you allow your mind to not play tricks on you, and you sit down, God causes distractions to leave you alone. Go have a seat distraction. And somewhere... In the middle of all my distraction, when I got enough courage to sit right where I am, Diane, not shed another tear, but rejoice in the Lord because his word is true, distraction leaves me. And so Jesus said, sit down. I wish I could preach this thing like I feel it. Sit down. Sit, sit, sit down. Well, I want to get up, but Jesus will sit on top of you and not let you move. God, I got to get up. No, sit down. Just sit down. I'm doing something in your life. It may take a while, but you got to learn how to sit there. You can't get up. I know you want to get up. I know you want to move, but if you just sit there, I'll remove every distraction from your life. God said, you don't need another pill. You don't need another drug. You don't need nothing but to sit down. Tilt your head back and say, no matter what goes on, I'm going to sit right here. And I'm going to stay right here until you move the distractions out of my life. Why? Sit down in your mind. Don't let your mind go crazy. Don't let your mind wander. Don't let your mind push you away. Don't let your mind do this. Just sit down. Sit down. And then he makes distraction a fleeted memory. And then that's when distraction becomes testimony. 
And when you've overcome that thing, watch this. Because you've sat down, I'm almost done. Okay, this is good, I know. God's good. He blows me away sometimes. When you sit down, then you get a testimony. So why do I sit down in my distraction and stand up and I testify? I stand up because now I have sat down. It's off of me. My faith stretches a little higher. And I can say, I can remember when distraction Elder Lloyd was following me around. Distraction Shalon, distraction Evangelist Moody were following me around. But you know what? I'm walking here in peace and in victory, and I want to testify to the glory of God that the distractions don't bother me anymore. And the reason I can stand up and testify is because I had enough sense to sit down in the middle of my distractions. How many believe God can work out anything? in your life just touch your neighbor and say sit down let your mind sit down let your thoughts sit down let everything that you're going through sit down because God said I will deliver you we're going to ask the altar ministry to come at this time have every eye closed every heart head bowed we just want you to pray father in the name of Jesus we thank you God for your spirit for your grace, for your mercy. I thank you, God, for the distractions that I had in my mind. You've already delivered me from them because you said don't worry about anything. Stay where I am and sit down knowing that you are going to work it out. Bless us, God. Heal our hearts and minds, God. Make us what we want to be. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Make us what we need to be. Make us who you want us to be. Fill us with your spirit. Fill us with your power. Fill us with your anointing, God. Distractions no longer. God, I'm sitting down in peace. I'm sitting down in breakthrough. I'm sitting down in victory so I can stand up one day and declare that you are God and God alone and there's nobody like you. In the name of Jesus, remove every distraction, every thought, every problem, every pain and let us know that in you we are healed set free and delivered in jesus name if you believe god is good today put your hands together if you believe he's dist he's beat the distractions out of your life come on put those hands together give god a praise hallelujah come on bless him come on bless him in this place god said i'm delivered delivering you from distraction i'm delivering you from a worry in mind i'm delivering you from a heavy heart god said i'm fixing it god said sit down sit down sit down i'm doing it in jesus name hallelujah Thank you.